Gen Nation, Kenny Kim here bringing you another Fantasy Golf Degenerates podcast this week for the Waste Management Phoenix Open. As usual, I am here with everybody's favorite Canadian, Tyler Tambaline. Tyler, what is up, my friend? What is up, Kenny? A good week, man. Hoagie week. We got Hoagie. Hit the bet on the pod. Varner, we're excited for that. I love to see the shirt. You, I should have worn mine today. Just thinking about it, got posted earlier, reminiscing back the, the week we went there and got up in the booth on 16. But this is a fun week, man. It's a fun one I want to get into. We're going to talk about all of it. As usual, before we get into it, I want to remind everyone very quickly, this podcast show is brought to you and presented by DraftKings. We'll have an offer for you later for the Super Bowl, of course. We'll do that before we get to the DFS tiers. And then, of course, our other partners over at Fantasy National, fantasynational.com slash FGD. Get yourself 20% off the first payment. Like you, It's any payment you sign up for, annual, monthly, whatever you want to do, but a run of very strong events. This, the Genesis, API, players, just a bunch of good events coming up, so you guys won't want to miss it. Check that out. But Kenny, Hoagie, get him the celebratory stogie. The man takes it down, gets the job done. I did not expect to hit that, but it turned out okay. I thought Cantley and Spieth, one of them was going to close it out, but Hoagie came from behind, got the job done down the stretch, and really looked impressive doing it. Really impressive with that. There was like a minute stretch uh, in the last three holes where our last like couple holes for Jordan and Hoagie where Jordan hit it into the bunker, uh, I think on 17 or 18, on 17. Hoagie goes ahead and hits that really close one, uh, either on 16 or 17 and tap in birdie, sort of like a two-shot swing. And then Hoagie does his thing on 18. Uh, Jordan doesn't birdie. Uh, it was uh, pretty impressive stuff uh, by him. You know, And the thing is like, you look at it, you look at Hoagie, I mean, he hasn't won yet. He's 32 years old. You look at the week before Luke List. I didn't realize Luke List was 37 years old. These guys are, you know, grinders on tour and finally getting that W. It's pretty big for these guys. Uh, so it was good for Hollywood. I had a lot of Hollywood DFS. I know you hit him uh, on the pod. I think we've hit like four of 16 events this 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 year between the both of us. Not bad. Uh, you know, 25% hit rate. Not, not the worst. Heating up. Not, yeah, not, not the worst. Um, you know, and so uh, hopefully we keep on going with that this week. I got a nice little six pack of bets here coming up for this week. Uh, but yeah, I mean, speed playing well again, uh, always good. You know, you, you have that that thing when it comes to speed where he was playing sort of like crap on the way into this tournament. But you look at the course history and I said, you sort of pay a little bit more attention to course history at that event. And it, it paid off. I had a lot of speed. Um, GPP wise, I did great. I almost doubled my money. I lost to cash check and probably my dumbest play of the year. I apologize about that. Uh, I really don't know what I was thinking. I was, I need someone cheap and he was just the one that stuck out. Uh, this week we're going back to the same routine, but uh, the guy I picked Korean much better than, than Cheka as my punt <laughs> play this week. Uh, but, uh, so, so yeah, it was a pretty impressive stuff by Spieth. Uh, I think we're going to see Spieth, you know, have, have a little bit of rise in ownership this week and well-deserved. He's going to be playing well. This is where he, he sort of catapulted up last year. Same thing happening this year. Uh, you know, it's always good when he's around and can't like couldn't really finish on Sunday. Uh, you know, he's been doing that thing where the first couple of rounds, he's been really good in the weekends. He hasn't been that great. We'll see if that ends this week. Uh, he's playing again. Then we have the Saudi field, uh, you know, our, our boy HV3 right here with that big pot uh, uh, on 18, 120 foot eagle putt to win the event. Uh, really exciting stuff in golf this weekend. What would you think about the week? Yeah, that was to me, the, that was everything. Just turning that on, being able to watch that. Just an incredible dude, right? you know it. And just to go out and see him make it the way he did, there was a couple angles you could watch it from after the fact. I watched it live, but just seeing it played back over and over. And just the emotion that comes off. In the end, it worked out. $475,000 putt for the difference between first and second. You know, he's getting it tight, right? He's using the putter. Make sure I get it up there. At least see the playoff with his boy Bubba and get the job done there maybe. But instead just goes out and holds the thing. Love the emotion. To me, it was better then the Spieth and Greller. I know it was a hole out from the bunker to ship it over um, Berger that year, but th that was something else. And that was with Spieth. With HV3, not everyone follows them as much as we do, and people across the industry, everything that we do. So it was awesome to see the emotion just pour out that you could see, you could read the damn cuss words coming off his mouth right out of the gate. And someone even asked him the question after, you're going to get that figured out, but who cares? It's, it's the emotion there. And then I said to you pre show, just, you know, obviously Bubba got a lot of accolades, got a lot of money, everything. Of course, he still wants to win, but you don't normally see the dude run down the friggin' alleyway, come back to the course like that. He was right there watching it, see it live, see him run down to get down there to meet up with HV3. And the only thing that sucked was probably less of his boys were there. Like if it had been on the PGA Tour, obviously not just the fact of getting a PGA Tour win, but the fact of how many other dudes would have been there to celebrate. He's a complete 
fan favorite. Everyone loves them. We love them. That to me was the excitement of the entire week. Uh, on the other side, you mentioned it, Spieth back. Like Cantlay couldn't have played worse. I think someone posted it was like his worst numbers on approach in like six months or something and still finished fourth. Really bad on Sunday. Spieth, almost like the speed of old after it wasn't, but I mean, he definitely played better. Great, great golf, but down the stretch, I'll say it this way, I guess that short putt, I almost felt it, man. I just said, I feel like he's going to miss this. He had to line it up again and get ready for it. And then of course he goes up and misses that the wheels came off a little bit, bunker shots, tree shots on 18, all that stuff sort of set up for a, a poor finish, but right there in the mix. You can't be too disappointed. Did the interview after with Amanda there, like that's just, you know, showing the confidence still it is what it is. He knows and he'll bounce back. Hostler in the mix was another guy, but we talked about some of the other guys last week. Like we like Merritt, Joel Damon, Putnam, Perez, all those guys. It was a really good week for me. Got a ticket. Got to give my boy Sundog a shout out. I had uh, no exposure to Bill Haas until I did on my last lineup. And it was one of those ones where you go back in the, you know, sort of the higher dollar, smaller field stuff. And you just say like, you know, I'm building it by hand. I landed somewhere in the range of Bill Haas and was like, absolutely not doing that. Then I see his article updates for that. I, I always go back, just give it a little look, see. And sure enough, he had Bill Haas in the DraftKings pick. So shout out, Martin. You were on the pod last week. It was awesome. Just going back to that. But yeah, four out of six was all it took to ship the ticket. I got a ticket to the Mega 4444 at the Genesis. And I had a really good week. That same lineup came like 22nd in the 555. Decent lineups around it. Good core all around. But uh, hoping to bounce back and finish the job this week. One of my favorite tournaments of the year. We got a lot more information coming into this one. Yeah, it was nice. Um, I was on Martin's show last week, the Golf Alternative Pod. He had that Haas pick. He also picked Hoey to win, so it was a pretty big week for Martin. So congrats and to Merritt him. too. Uh, he had uh, on the show. He had Merritt. Guy. Yeah, well, I had Domin and I had uh, Merritt live. I, had, I think Merritt one hundred thirty to one. Uh, Ma uh, Domin seventy to one. They sort of, uh, you know, uh, disappointed there at, at, on the back nine. Uh, but I think that's the way I'm going to go about the, the, the betting process right now. So I'm doubling my exposure in gambling. I'm going from $100 a week to $200 a week. Uh, right now, I've got about $150 in bets for outrights, and I'll save 50 for life. Uh, that's probably the way that I'm going to go uh, when it comes to betting. I, I, one thing about this past week, Bo Hostler really impressed me, um, you know, because you, you saw that double early on. You think he's over. You think he's done. He comes back and fights. You really haven't seen that from Bo. Uh uh, a lot in his career. Usually he just fades and keeps fading when he's near the top of that leaderboard. So that was impressive to me. Uh, that makes him a little bit more valuable, I think, this week. Uh, maybe he can use that uh, momentum to, to go in to this week and have a good finish as well as a cheap price. Uh, but, yeah, so it, it, was, it was a good week. I mean, uh, and, and we're going to keep on going. Uh, we'll see how the gambling goes. And I, I like my Cascade Cornerstones this week. So uh, it should be a fun week. And, of course, we have – the Super Bowl as well. Who do you got? Who do you got? Tampa yeah, right, right now I'm leaning the Bengals, and I'll tell you why. Because first off, obviously how good they are. We talk about it plenty on here. Just the Joe Burrow swagger, all those young dudes. But uh, I've got a couple of buddies that have some bigger outrights on futures with the Rams, and their money is staying locked up. Usually they get a cash out option. That le that leans me a little bit more to thinking that the books are saying, yeah, we're going to keep that money and not let you take any of it out right now. And have the other side, but I just think the Bengals are the better team. I know the Rams sold out they, on paper. They're the better team, the O-line of the, the Bengals, all that stuff. But, if, you know, betting, I'm betting the Bengals plus four. That's my bet. Here's the thing. Who do you think is the better quarterback is the way yeah. I'm going about this. Yeah. I think so, too. I think so, too. Sure. The money line plus 170. That's what I'm taking. And, and it's I, only the beginning no. for Burrow. Yep. Like, everyone's yep. going to say that. Look, look, I'm a Ravens fan. I'm in the AFC North. Lamar, I hate this. Right. I hate to have to say it even, but when you talk about who the better quarterback is to me, it's not close. Stafford has done what he's, he was expected to do, did his job. Remember they gave away Goff, got Stafford in. That was the excitement for them. It worked. They got Beckham. They got Von Miller. They brought in all these dudes when already having Donald and Ramsey and the other pieces around Cooper cup, Robert Woods, unfortunately got injured, but they made up for it. So great squad on paper. They should win. I have a feeling the Bengals pull it off. That's where I'm at with it for sure. I think I think on paper the Bengals have a better offense, more, more better players, uh, better position players. You know, you look at the wide receivers they have. They have uh, Higgins and they have Chase, and you're going to Cup's probably better than both of them. But you know, everyone else is sort of below. Uh, you know, I don't think Odell's as good as those guys right now at his age. Uh, and I, I, I think you know they got Boyd and they got Mixon, who I think is a better running back than I like Mixon yeah, too. I yeah, was going to yeah, say so. That, yeah. I, I mean, uh, defensive wise is going to be the problem. The Bengals, they're going to have to hold them in check, but you're always good for a couple of staff of picks. 
you know? Yeah. So, and the Bengals so, got to figure it out. Remember that game a couple games ago, they took nine sacks and still pulled it out. Yeah. That feels like that could happen again. You just got to be better about it and try and pull it out a different way and not take nine of them this time. That'll be what we have to wait and see. But I think it's going to be a good game no matter what. And to be honest, man, there's no way it can be bad because think about the playoffs we just got. We just got hey, the be, best playoffs I've ever yeah, seen. It's been so good. Oh, you, you, you're you going to be on a bunch of shows this week. I, I was on, uh, you got to check it out. It's probably coming out next week. Uh, I was on the uh, the Custy Awards preview show oh, yeah. uh, th- this past week with Pat and a couple of other guys. Uh, I will say I we recorded it on a weekend. Uh, so I don't remember much of what I said. <laughs> But I think it was funny. I think I had a good time. I don't remember much because by the end of the, by the end of the pod, I was pretty lit because it was you know, recorded on a Friday. I'd just gotten home from work, and you know when I get home from work, I'm pouring like you know five fingers, you know drinks and stuff yeah. like that. So 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 it was fun. You should check it out next week, uh, and make sure you go online and vote for the Custy Awards. Uh, and and I think um, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Cust is the, the most insane person though, Jeff. Jeff, Jeff, a couple weeks ago, when we talked about the, uh, the, uh, what he wanted to see in the Olympics and he wanted to see like a kidnapping on the 50, as a Jewish man on the 50th anniversary <laughs> of Munich games. Hey, yeah. Uh, a little crazy there, Jeff, a little crazy, but it's okay. I forgive you. I thought it was hilarious. All right, let's move on. Uh, uh, I did love your tweet today, by the way, the one where you said, if they put together the montage of you, you would definitely be canceled as well. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, it would be, I'd be done. <laughs> for, for the that, freedom of speech. Oh, good Lord. Yeah, it'd be over. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It would not be good. All right, so let's get to the Listener League winner for this past week. It was Jim Brucker. Uh, no avatar. Seamus Power, who, again, was one of my fades last week. That was probably one of the bad calls I had other than Cheka. The two bad calls I had last week were Cheka and, and Power fading. Uh, everything else is pretty damn good. Uh, so, uh, you know, Power... Uh, 19%, 18% owned, finished in the top 10. Lanto Griffin, solid finish, 15% owned, finished 16th. Hollywood Hoagie, 10% owned, not bad. Uh, of course, he was the winner. Mito, he ended up uh, missing the cut. But again, of course, uh, you know, th- three 54-hole uh, cut. So it made it a lot easier. Joel Dahman, who I liked, uh, 8% owned. I had him in cash, almost got me to the promised land in cash. Uh, with three of six, uh, if he won and, and Day didn't shit the bet on Sunday, I would have made it. So, you know, that sort of strategy when it comes down to it, picking guys you think, you know, who are up there, you think you can win and then punting, it almost still worked out. Uh, I was a little disappointed with Streelman, uh, his first missed cut here in a while. Uh, I don't know what to make of that. I'll probably play him again next year again. And then he, his, his, his cheap play was Hayden Buckley, uh, $7,600. bucks. Uh, i am sorry, $7,000, finished with 76 points. Finished in a tie for 50, uh, tie for 49th. What you think of the lineup? The lineup's good. Five of six got it done. Like you said, the biggest thing for me that stood out was just the roster construction going off the upper five figure, you know, the five figure guys completely adding in three 8K range guys. When look, I see that there's ownership on Lanto and Mito, but there wasn't much ownership in that 8K range. And most people had two at most. So him to put three in there makes a lot of sense. And then not having to go into the 6K range. That was one of my biggest things last week. We talked about it some, of course, played some lineups with some 6K guys, just mentioned it with Haas or whatever. But in general, like you had Sig to round it out and Buckley did his job for him. But just to talk about that quick, like Eck wrote, I'll, I'll victory lap that some just because I love that stat. I'm going to keep doing it. We talk about using Fantasy National all the time. Just go back. And he was popping like crazy. Eck wrote, I'm using for 50 rounds. And I'll talk more about him later, actually, because I think he'd be more interesting for this week, to be honest. But uh, went out, did his thing on Monterey out of the gate, six under to start the week, and then shot a 71 and then a 74 to miss the cut. It got worse as the weekend went on. And just because, like you said, you look at the numbers, looked good. But when you look when he'd actually played and where those numbers were coming from, it wasn't really, to me, recent form. It was from like seven or eight months ago when those numbers were showing up in these stat models. So not to take away from this lineup, it's a great lineup. We got Jim Brucker into the Tournament of Champions. He'll be in with us in the three men. I didn't check it. Me and you had a down wire to wire stretch. I got to go look. I won once again by 20. Oh, it wasn't God. close. It was so it wasn't close. close. I, I won again. A three of six one that I actually had three. I had the same lineup in the, in the listener league, finished 64th uh, with a three of six. Uh, you finished in, in the money. Time. And so Check basically, what it comes down to is I've won every single three man this year so far. So. Come on, Tambo. Come on, listeners. Y'all, I mean, and I, I, and I had a four out of six, and yeah, that's how bad it was. I had Hollywood. I don't know that you didn't have Hollywood, right? That's the issue. Yeah, no, yeah I, I had the winner. I had the winner. So uh, that ended up working out 
uh, for him. But again, another victory right there for, for Mr. It. Kenny Kim. All right, so let's go to uh, this week. Um, the PGA Tour, of course, goes to Phoenix for the Waste Management Phoenix Open. Uh, you know, always one of the most exciting tournaments here. You get 600,000 fans. It's going to go back to normal last year. I think they were only allowing 5,000 guests a day. They're going back, I think, to the full bore, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the stadium course, uh, stadium should be packed and full. I know for the previous years, I've always said, you know, golfers have to have a certain type of mind frame to go in and play uh, this tournament. But the more I think about it, and this is something that I can ask you about, Tambo, um, you know, from what I've heard, the rest of the course is pretty quiet. Mostly golf fans, mostly good etiquette. It's just that one hole. Am I right, Tambo? It carries over to crazy. some, like there's always the buzz and the little hum around it. But yeah. absolutely, it's not even close to the same yeah. anywhere else. A lot of the times you can actually get some really good spots just going to like yeah. the other par threes. You can be two feet away from them hitting their tee shot. And you can still yeah, see some I heard the front. I heard like the that. front nine is like that. The front nine is basically like no one's there. Yeah, uh, everyone's so, so, getting to where yeah. the party happens exactly. So, so, so you know, I'm not so for years before you know guys with hot heads who couldn't really handle. It, I've sort of put that into play. I'm not taking that into play again this year because the more I think about it, you know, it's one hole. These guys can pony up, get the balls, go out there, play that hole fine, and then the rest of the time they'll be okay. And even on the front nine, maybe a little bit more quiet than a lot of other golf tournaments uh, that you get onto in the weekend. So I'm not putting that thing into any part of my equation when I look into the golfers this week, seeing, you know, even if they've had bad experiences on that hole before, you know, I know Billy Horst has had some bad experiences in Polter, <laughs> stuff like that. He hates people, man. It's actually I'm just, hilarious. I'm Billy just not even, I'm not, and the thing is, Billy's made every cut here for God knows how long, maybe missed one of his last like seven or eight. So it's not like it's really been affecting him. So, so I'm not even going to pay attention to that when it comes to uh, picking my golfers this week, you know, uh, and so the stadium course, TPC Scottsdale, 72, 66 yard, par 71, four par threes, four par fives. All the par fives are reachable uh, by the majority of golfers. Uh, and then the 17th, of course, is a risk reward drivable par four. Uh, redesigned by Tom Weisskopf in 2014, tried to make it a little bit more difficult. He did. I think he went from like the 36th average most difficult course on tour before then to like the 27th, 28th most difficult course on tour. So yeah, but it's still middle of the road. It's not really impossible. Winning score, usually minus 15 or minus 19, somewhere in those high teen ranges. Um, you know, and so, uh, you know, when, even though this tournament is, you know, played in the water, uh, play off the tee golfers, they're going to see narrow landing areas, bunkers placed strategically, uh, 1,200 feet above sea level. So the players are going to play a little bit shorter, uh, not too many drivers off the tee. You'll see some, uh, but it's not going to be like pounding a driver every single time uh, on, on every hole. Uh, now, it's in the desert, but there's still water in play on like seven holes. Uh, if golfers miss wildly off the tee, they're going to have to deal with desert vegetation. Uh, the rough round of fairways has been a little bit thicker the last few years. I expected it to be around there, but it's nothing crazy. Uh, not like Tory or anything like that. Um, on approach shots, golfers uh, should see uh, you know wide array of green sizes ranging from small to very large. Uh, bunkers guard the majority of the Bermuda grass greens and water will be an issue on some golfers who aren't accurate with their irons. Uh, the greens are relatively flat, firm, fast, stiff meter rating of around 12 or more. Uh, golfers with weaker short games should rejoice uh, as, you know, getting it up and down from around these greens is not the most difficult of propositions. Um, you know, weather could be an issue this week. I mean, it's supposed to be nice and sunny, but you're going to get winds around 15 miles per hour on the uh, afternoons. Uh, could really uh, help the morning wave in the first couple of days. 20, 25 mile per hour winds on Saturday. Uh, Sunday looks pretty good. Now, this is early in the week. Everything can change. Uh, but there's a little bit of wind issue uh, coming in this week. What do you think? Uh, what are you looking for in golfers this week, Tampa? Yeah, a lot of what you talked about, like I said, the course is very well known. One of the biggest things is the course history factor. I think Data Golf had it today that behind it, so Augusta National Golf Club, of course, number one. Number two, Wiley Country Club, which kind of correlates with it. You, you've seen correlation between Augusta in here as well as Wiley in here, so it makes sense. And then this is the third highest as far as course history goes, just being relevant. So I think that is something where I don't ever put a lot of stock into it, but it's one spot you'd want to do it a little bit more. You talked about it a little last week. And it worked out in some cases, so it could definitely be a factor. Again, we'll get to Hideki later. We'll talk some Ricky Fowler, maybe. We'll we'll talk about all these guys. Brooks last year, if you remember last year, Brooks hit the big W for us. I think we all had him at, what, 40 to 1 or something, where the number just seemed wrong. I don't think that's the same when Ricky Fowler is 90 to 1, just because he's played good here before. He's not a, a four-time major champion that we're getting behind on that kind of number. So we'll leave him off when it comes to that, probably, at least for me. But Getting into it, that, you know, approach tee to green in general, the par four scoring is always big. It's those same guys that show up. Desert golf, 
faster greens. But, you know, what we have seen, you talked about a little, and we'll bring it up with some of the names later. Look at the winners lately. Luke List got his W. It's the same sort of thing here where you see these guys, you can play a little bit of the more, whatever you want to call it, team no putt or whatever, however you want to put a name to it, of these guys, just good ball strikers can maybe make some of the putts. It gets sort of a, you know, a setup that makes it a little bit more fair for everyone when it comes to that. And that's why you can see some of those winners in Hideki and those guys like that Ricky showing up when, you know, he was putting better at the time, but we'll have to see what he does this year. So that's all I really got, man, for me. Yeah. I mean, you think about it, there's not going to be that much rain. There hasn't been that much rain. I mean, there's a desert, but there still hasn't been that much rain in the area this year. I think the, the fairways are going to be nice and firm and balanced. You're going to get a lot of roll, which tends to lead to less driving accuracy uh, but, you know, percentage, uh, a little bit more play from the rough and stuff like that. And I think that's going to be in play this week. You're going to see the firms be the greens be a bit firmer uh, than you see. Not much rain. I think Phil won here, what, 2013, 2012, minus 23, 24. Uh, it's because it was really soft. I don't think we're going to see that mid, mid teens, maybe, maybe 18 under. I think he's going to win uh, this week. All right. Before we get into the tiers, let's go ahead and pay some bills. An epic NFL season comes to an end this Sunday and DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Super Bowl 56, has a super offer for new customers. Get 56 to 1 odds on either team. Bet just $5 or more and get 280 in free bets if your team wins. Betting on MMA more your style? DraftKings Sportsbook also has tons of ways to bet Saturday's big UFC 271 event in Houston. Throw down on who will win each fight, how fights will finish, and so much more. Fists are sure to fly in the main event middleweight title bout, so don't miss out. Download the DraftKings Sports app, use promo code FGD, bet just $5 or more on either Super Bowl 56 team, and get 280 in free bets if they win. That's promo code FGD at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official betting sports partner of Super Bowl 56. 21 or older, minimum age and location requirements vary by jurisdiction. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for full list of requirements and state-specific responsible gaming resources. Void where prohibited. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In Tennessee, call or text the TN red line 1-800-889-9789. In Connecticut, call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In New York, 8778-H-O-P-E-N-Y or text H-O-P-E-N-Y 467-369. All right, so let's get to these tiers. Let's start up at the top. We got Hovlin all the way up to John. Rob, how are you going about this top tier this week, Tambo? Yeah, two or three guys here for sure. One, not going away from John Rom. We've talked about it all season. Second and third places in tournaments where he just hasn't even played well at all. Of course, he's the fan favorite, the home favorite, whatever you want to call it and the price is there and there's other guys you could play instead, but I, I'm just sticking with it. I think Rom is, you know, the best play up here at 11, six after that dropping down one guy that seems a little bit underpriced is going on the other end of the spectrum to the very bottom, Victor Hovland winning just two weeks ago uh, on the Euro tour over there. So I think, you know, going back to him at 10, two and then picking between the other guys is tough, but Hideki with the history, with the numbers, the ball striking, I think it's two wins in his last four now that we've seen knows the course very well. You know, you could set your lineups up a little bit different where if you went away from Rom, you could go with Hideki Hovland and still get a unique lineup that way. You could pick just one of them and drop down and still disperse your ownership up here plenty. But I like starting with these guys. And when we get to the betting segment later, Kenny, I'm betting a lot of guys that are longer shots just because um, I'm just throwing my money in there, hoping that if it hits, it's one of them. I truly do think the winner comes from up here. So I'm going with Rom, Hovland, and Hideki. Uh, my first Cascade Cornerstone is going to be Hovland uh, when it comes to this week. I mean, 10-2, I think it's a great price for a guy who's won, you know, a fair amount in the last few months. I mean, the guy has been playing exceptionally well. Of course, Hovland's weakness is his short game. Not going to have to worry about that too much. Pretty easy to get it up and down uh, in this event. So I like Hovland and Cash. I like his number at 16-1. to 1. He is going to be my one bet up top. Um so I, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and take take that for for the 10k range. Other guys I do like. I'm going to play Hideki. I think the price is is is, is pretty good. You can do a lot of good lineups with you know Hideki uh, Hovland. It's not impossible to start that way. A little bit more difficult to start with Rom and JT. Um, now when it comes to the other three guys, I haven't really decided. I'll probably play one of the one of the guys up top. I'm leaning Justin Thomas. I have a feeling Cantley is going to be really under owned. Um, maybe like sub 10% single digits. It could be worth it 
to go because I know he has no course history here. Uh, and so you're, 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 you know, like you said, the course history is important, but the guy's a talented guy. I mean, he's just been knocking off top five, top tens, you know, the player of the year last year. Um, I don't see that big of a gap between Cantlay and I mean, there is a gap, but it's not as huge as it was, uh, you know, between Cantlay and Rom. Um, and so, you know, and I think JT and Cantlay almost, you know, head to head right now, pretty level uh, with each other, both exceptionally good golfers who've been playing really good form, knocking off both of these. Uh, I think I'm going to play the ownership game. When it comes to just looking at the board and stats wise, I, I'm lead JT, but if I see Cantlay at like, you know, 8%, 9%, something like that. I might have to go that way uh, in GPPs because, you know, I, I, because you expect Rom to be popular 20 plus. Uh, I think JT will be 18 plus, uh, you know, somewhere around there. You know, you get half the ownership for, for Canley for a guy who's just as good as those guys. Maybe that's less, but I mean, still pretty damn good golfer. Uh, you know, it could be a, a good play this week when it comes to uh, GPP. Let's move down to the 9K range. Uh, I got two other cash game cornerstones here. I'm going Xander. Uh, doesn't miss many cuts. Uh, of course, you know, uh, his iron game is always, always strong. Really good on longer par fours. You're going to see a bunch from 450 to 500 this week. Uh, you know, pretty good course history here. I think he finished, what, second here last year. Uh, so if you're going that route, which, you know, I am most of the time in cash, uh, I do like Xander uh, as my second cash game cornerstone. My third cash game cornerstone is going to be Scotty Scheffler. I uh, know he had a top 10. He missed a cut here a couple of years ago in his first appearance. Uh, backed it up with a top 10 here last year. Again, another guy who doesn't miss too many cuts out there. It's a ton of birdies, iron game strong, lots of draft king points, really strong on par fives. Uh, so I, I do like uh, Scheffler when it comes to GPPs. Uh, you know, I, I, I think I'm going to play Spieth just because of the way he's been playing and, and, and how uh, he did last week. His iron game was so good uh, last week, uh, you know, until it sort of came to the end of, uh, of the event. Uh, you know, I think another win is in her, is Horizon. I, I, so I like, I, I like Spieth for GPPs. And then after that, I'm not really sure. It's either going to be – I'll play Brooks or Burns. Again, Burns could be another guy who could be really, really low-owned, uh, who could help you win. Uh, now, Kepka is the sort of the speeth of this past week, uh, you know, when it comes to a guy whose course history – who is really, really good, but he has been playing very well. So we'll see how that ownership really goes out when you go to, you know, run pure gup or fantasy national, whatever you do for your, um, for your ownership percentages. I I'll be taking a big eye on that because, you know, I think it's important really, especially in these fields where it's a lot of really top tier guys, there's going to be some guys that are, elite golfers that are going to go by the wayside when it comes to ownership and picking up on those, I think is very important when it comes to these type of events with a top heavy event, uh, you can get some leverage there. Uh, so uh, I'm playing the ownership game a lot in the nine K and up range. What about you? Yeah. I love that you brought that up just to kick it back to the top for two seconds, the can't like conversation. I, I do like that because you know, I don't like to play a five figure decky anyway. And it's just lately he's been winning. So it's like, yeah, he's finally yeah. doing his job and you're trying to find winners in these zones. Oftentimes we've talked about it. Uh, just, it was a, what, a couple weeks back when Hideki won again and everyone played Sung Jay right underneath him. We've had this conversation on this pod where it's like, that's where you're playing the talent of what we've seen lately, but then the, the long-term winner and the guy in the deck who's been playing great golf actually wins out and ships the tournament at much lower ownership. Cantlay, you and I talked pre-show again on this, but just had one of his worst weeks in forever. And still look at his numbers, fourth, ninth, fourth, coming into the event. So uh, if I was to do that, I would probably just go off Decky. Like if I see Decky coming in at 20% or something like that here, I love playing Rom, Cantlay, and Hovland. Another point that you brought up that I think is really important to remember, I, I remember it all, all the time, every year here, because ownership gets destroyed at this tournament like every single time. So whoever the popular 7K guy becomes, whoever the popular 6K, I know you could say this every week, but there's no tournament that I remember it more clear each year where the, the chalk just gets massacred and you're there just waiting on day one. Like, how is this person five over on that tougher front nine when you've need them and they're at 30% on that's what ends up happening. So I love your call there with getting a little bit different. Uh, some of the guys I like in this range, I like the Scheffler call. Uh, I like you know, uh, Sam Burns, who you brought up. I think those two are pretty interesting. I got a bet on Sam Burns. So we'll see if I don't get as much exposure here, but you would expect people to go back to speed. I like your Xander call. Got second here last year. Like people can go in that range 
I want to get your thoughts on two things. One, your strategy this week, because this is not a 54 cut event. This is not, you know, anything guaranteed. It's it's a standard. We're back to normal. There's no course rotations. There's no, uh, you know, three three rounds before the cut. There's no pro am. There's none of this shit. We're back to real golf, if you will. So there's that with your strategy of playing two nine Ks and a and a ten K and dropping down to probably a cheap guy later. And then secondly, want to get your thoughts on Daniel Berger. I said it last week. Like I just, I'm the hater on Twitter of this. Everyone gives me shit, but like I don't care about an injury report. You want guys to go out and ask every golfer in the interview and, and they're all, they all could say something like tiger won the U S open with a broken leg. If he told you that before the event, you wouldn't have played him and, and bet on him. And he goes on and wins the event. There's so many examples, Billy Horschel the week before guys that say their clubs were terrible for them and, the, and we weren't working for them on the range. And then they go out and crush. If the, if the only good reason to ask Berger last week, if he was injured was if you wanted to play him and we're hoping to get lower ownership, that to me is the only reason, but in my opinion, which is that what ended up happening, happening, if he's actually injured, he'll WD in advance. And he did. So you can't go ask every golfer, every interview, by the way, how's your injuries this week? They're independent contractors that may or may not tell you anyway, and it doesn't matter. But I am curious your thoughts on Daniel Berger this week, because he immediately registered for this field and it, maybe it was precautionary, get something done in between to get that extra break. And who knows, maybe, you know, just didn't want to, he, he did his, he had his stuff, did his obligations because he's the defending champion, get out of there and then come get ready for this event where I think he's got what a ninth, seventh, 10th and 11th. Like this yeah. is a good spot at 9,200. I think if Berger didn't withdraw last week, he'd probably be my favorite play in the 9k range. He'd probably be in my cash game cornerstones over Sheffield. Okay. Um, if, if Berger played last week and he was fine, I think, it might be worth playing him, uh, especially if people are against it because he withdrew from last week and he had you know, people a known injury problems the week before. Um, it could be worth it. I'm really curious to know what his ownership is. If it's like six, seven percent, I mean, fifteen percent, you're almost triple him. That could be worth it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that could be worth it because people are scared to play him because of WD. I like the way you're thinking because if he's really injured. He'll probably withdraw before the event starts. Yeah, there was like it's always the same thing with him, Louis, Kevin. Not like the one. Remember uh, Burger, the WGC where he teed off, took his money. Well, that's, and ran. that's because he got money. And for, he had right. to tee off and, once. And I know to get he paid. took flack for that, but I think he ended up giving it back via charity or whatever. But my point is, everyone remembers when their pocket aces got cracked by pocket kings. They don't remember, or by jacks, or whatever. They don't remember when they did it the other way. And it's like every other time he's come through. Like, when has Berger been a known withdraw guy that screws you over? Not one that I remember. And so if no one's going to play him at 9,200, I do have a little more interest. I I've got more worry for a guy later on, like Charlie Hoffman, who started the tournament last week and then had to WD because of something came up. That that's where I would have more concern, Kenny. So, and then give me your strategy thoughts. I'm just curious, because I know you've mentioned in the past going more aggressive in these no cut events or in these events, of course, or, or like last week we're 54 hole, but here there's a lot of good plays. I'm thinking about out loud in my mind of this 8K range we're about to get to that you could use in cash. And you're basically having to go over them for the most part, right? With this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like, you know, I have the one guy that I, mean, I have three guys in 9K or 10, 10, 2, 9, 9, and 9, 1. And then I have my punt play is going to be 6, 2. That still leaves me 50, almost 15K. Uh, okay. So I can go to the 8K range if I want to. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually the, the, the first build that I have, it's pretty close. I got a 7,900 offer in there and then a 6,900 offer, not often get two 6k guys, but I like the 6k range. There's a lot of guys that I think can do well, uh, this week in that range. I got no problem. Also the lower 7k, there's a lot of guys out there. So you can go up top and still be able to do a good lineup. Um, you know, I think balance might be a little bit different than what people are going to be doing. I think mm -hmm. most people are going to go up top. So if you want to differentiate when it comes to GPPs, you might want to go balance, you know, go Hovland, uh, speed, and then go down to the 8K, 7K, 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 and just completely ignore the 6K. Uh, that's definitely possible. And it's probably going to be uh, a little bit different than most when it comes down to how most GPP lineups are configured when it comes to a week like this. But I mean, I, in cash, the way I'm going about it now is I want three guys that I think that can win. Um, and, and, you know, in my cash game cornerstones, and the majority yeah. of them are usually going to be 9K and up. Uh, That's what I thought. I, I thought you might say that. That's why I wanted to bring it up because it's a good conversation around strategy. We try and bring it up as much as possible in here. And I think you nailed it. I think that's one of the things I've noticed as well. Not that I play cash, but just in general, seeing it is like your four out of six or five out of six is still super live 
when yeah. your three dudes up top are Scheffler, Xander, yeah. and Hovland. That I mean, all I was, could be freaking yeah. one, two, three down the stretch, right? Like, I mean, you know he, I mean? well, he, here's the thing about cash. It's so difficult to get to six. I don't know whether it's because it's because we went the top 65 in ties or not. But when it comes down to it, you know, the most you'll see usually uh, get, get six or six is 10%. What we've seen a lot is 3% or less. Uh, I, I was it told comes, it's because these guys know that they're chalk on DraftKings.com and then they bust. Mm. Yeah, that, that's yeah, what yeah. I was told. So it's a lot tougher. And, and, and the thing is you, you get, you get the, uh, the five or six, you know, usually around 20 to 30%. Uh, so, you know, that still leaves you four or six possible most weeks in most weeks. And if you have somebody that can win or, or two guys in the top five and you go four or six, it's, it, you have a better than 50% chance of winning cash. Uh, so that's why I think I'm going the way I am. Okay. Um, no, it was a lot better in the fall. I mean, I had a couple of good weeks early in the season. Now, last week was horrible. It was my worst cash week of the year, uh, my only two or four uh, of the year. So it hasn't been that bad, and it's been going pretty well uh, in cash. I've won more than I've lost. How about that uh, this season so far with this new uh, with this new type of strategy that I'm going? And that's I think that's the way I'm going to keep going because it is so difficult uh, mm-hmm. to to get six of six through. So I mean, the thing is. Uh, you know, when we go down to my punt play, I'll talk about it, but I mean, like, you know, I think he has a better 50%, better than 50% chance of making a cut. And that's all you want from a guy at $6,200. Uh, so, all right, but uh, enough of the strategy. Yeah, I'm yeah, just curious because I think it's helpful to people out there trying to, to figure it out. I, I don't think your math is good on your, your punt play. There. I don't think he has even close to a 50% chance. You don't of, think so? Uh, I mean, he's made the he's made the cut seven of his last eight. I will talk about it when he gets down there. Actually, right, so sorry, may, maybe he does. What I was looking, I, I was gonna say, I don't think he has even close to that. I thought you were thinking like top twenty or something, but no, just made the cut. I just make the cut. That's all I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're that's in all I want from, that. Yeah, yeah. You're, that's you're all I want from a guy from down there. Okay, I, I, I mean, fuck it. Let's just go ahead and talk about it, uh, so we can just get rid of the cash talk right now. Uh, I'm yeah. using James Hahn at sixty two hundred dollars for my final cash game cornerstone. So my four cash game cornerstones this week are going to be Victor Hovland at 10-2. Um, and then we got Xander Shoffley at uh, 9-7. Uh, Scotty Scheffler at 9-1. James Hahn at 6.2. It still is around 14800 to, to, to make your lineup. Now, the, the reason I went Hahn is because, you know, he's made what seven of his last eight cuts here, something like that. And the thing is, he's been playing not well, but if you look, Last year, I think he had a, a miscut and, and like a, a couple outside the top 30 in his three previous events, and he finished 10th the year before. Uh, he missed three or four or five cuts in a row leading up to this event, still finished 25th. This is one of those course history things we talked about earlier uh, in the podcast, how important course history is here when it comes to um, you know how golfers perform, and this guy loves the course. Obviously, doesn't matter if he played like ass beforehand. Uh, you know, when he gets here, he usually ends up playing, at least making the cut which, which is normally what else and that's all i really want from him if, if he can make the cut i think 50 percent chance i'll take that uh with my guys up top hovland who i think can win xander who i think can win Sheffler, who i think can win you know uh and so so i you know and then it still leaves me i can go you know uh, maybe billy horse from adam hadwin to fill it out you know another couple of course history guys out there it's not bad when you get to the 7k range uh you know or i can mix it up with somebody else in there um but, but the, that's probably where I'm leaning uh, when it comes to cash this week. And right, any so, worry yeah. with uh, with James Hahn because he withdrew last week, last minute? Uh, yeah, he did. I mean, there's always worry about that. But, I mean, you know, again, he withdrew last minute. It was before. If he withdraws again, I, I might have to change it up. I don't know who I'm going to use down there. That could really mess things up. But, I mean, we'll, we'll see. This is a tournament he loves, a tournament he plays. Uh, I'm, I'm not too worried about it. And I'm really just needling the uh, the interview reporter – Twitter mob because it's the same damn thing. It, oh, you, you, if you're playing him, you play him. Like you said, you got a reason to play him. Maybe he'll be lower owned because he went through last week. We have no clue why. I mean, you're not going to get an answer owned. why. You're not going to get a gonna... James Hahn interview yeah. Yeah, to yeah. find out why he went through. So that's yeah. my point. I just laugh about it. Play who you want to play, you know, build your lineups accordingly. I like it. I like the strategy quite a bit. And then it's the overlooked portion that we talk about ever so often. Like we just talked earlier with our listener league winner, three, eight K guys. It was a completely different roster construction. You're in cash with three guys that can literally win the tournament up top. A guy like you mentioned, I just looked it up. 56% chance for James Hahn to make the cut is what the odds are right now. And then you don't have all the eight K guys that everyone else is jamming in. So even if they jam them in, get a five out of six and they make those, that guy in their eight K range gets, 40th or something you've got outs to still beat them to the top just like you won the three man this week with a three out of six you just had the right people in the right places so i love it let's talk about this 8k range kenny 
We got Tony Finau, which is an interesting case here down to Harris English, but Tony Finau, some people, uh, you know, it's a little bit polarizing, right? Tony Finau under 9K, upside forever, can score decent results at this course, at least recently. And then some people say like, no one's going to play him because he hasn't been that good lately. So what are your thoughts on Finau and the rest of this range? Yeah, I mean, Finau is a little bit cheaper. I'd be in. I'm a little bit worried about the way he's been playing. He has not been showing himself very well this year so far. Again, uh, you know, he he has uh, a couple of nice finishes. But he also has like four missed cuts here also. It's not like it's been all great for Tony uh, at the Waste Management Phoenix Open. I sort of like Usti. I think this might be the one. Every time usti has been around for the last year, you're getting a lot more ownership on Usti's um, than, than you normally have in the years previous. I think this week it's going to come back down to Back, back down to normal. I don't see many people using Louis. Uh, I do like Louis. He fits Louis. He fits out for the course. He's played here a couple of times. Pretty good finishes here. Not bad, um, you know. And so you know, really good on those longer par fours from 450 to 500. So I like Usti uh, a lot as someone that you can play. Uh, I think I have to go back to Seamus Power uh, at 8400. Uh, I was off him last week. I thought maybe he'd be a little bit tired. Uh, but, you know, he went out, performed pretty well, sort of faded again on the weekend. But, I mean, you know, his time is – it seems like it's coming here soon. Uh, so, I like Seamus a lot. And I'll play Russell Henry uh, as well uh, at um, at $8,200. Uh, you know, last time out, he just missed. Uh, the guy is an iron machine. Uh, again, all he needs to do is putt just a little bit better. Um, and he can do his thing. He's not going to kill you if he doesn't win at 8200 Top 10 would work for him. And I could see that from him. Yeah, I love that call. I thought you might even use them in cash earlier the way you were setting it up. But uh, again, like you said, just a good number, good price, 8,200. I like him later. I actually have a bet on him. Like what you said about Seamus Power, the guy is just a complete all around game. Just play him every week right now. It's like ninth, 14th, 15th, second, like just every result is there. Uh, another a fellow, an Irish woman, Le- Leona McGuire, she got the job done last week. So he's got to be a little bit motivated there. So like that. Uh, and always he wants, to get, a, he wants to get a tweet. He wants to get a tweet from the president. President of Ireland, every time they win, every time one of those Irish guys win, he, he shouts them out out there. Uh, so he probably wants he to get that. He got his. Bit. He got his Barbasol win. Remember, he took down JT Post in that nice, sweet bunker shot when uh, Poston thought he had the thing won. And then all of a sudden, Power put it right in his mouth, holes it out, made them go to the next hole and got the job done there. But I like your Louis call, 8,800. We've talked about this time and time again. The ownership has definitely ticked up in the past, but it just never gets to enough of a number. Like, if, what's it going to get to? 15%? either play him or you don't. I think at 8,800, it's a fair price. He has the all around game. We talk about it all the time. He he plays in those stronger fields. This range is the other range. So like I said, I think the winner is up top, but I have no problem going with like Rom. And then again, going down to here and picking a couple of these guys to to be your winner. Like Hoagie was 8,500 last week. You could easily see the same sort of setup with your construction here. And I think, you know, Louie is a guy looked second at all those majors, all those good finishes usually only play stronger fields. We talk about it time and time again with Adam Scott. This is a stronger field than what we've seen recently, but this is not a strong field, if you get what I'm saying. Like compared to some of the ones we'll see upcoming, Genesis, the players, we're talking about the strongest fields of the year. This is the sort of lead up to that. We're just back to normal golf. So it's a strong field. It's not as strong. So I think Scott could show up and do damage, power, the all-around game. And then I'm going to go back to Corey Connors as well. I just think, again, you talk about the guys that do well here, not necessarily needing to have that putter, He's shown up in these other places. One of the best ball strikers in the field. You go to him here. And like I said, so that's Louie, Scott, Power, Connors, Henley. There's five guys you can mix and match between in this range. Put a couple of them with Rom, and you can still get a pretty nice lineup. So I think, or if you want to drop down to Cantlay or, or Hovland, go ahead to get some more money down below. But I think it's just a different roster construction this week, and I kind of like it. All right, let's move to the 7K range. I really like this upper 7K range. I like, I'm playing a lot of these guys up top. I think of my favorite, it's going to be Luke List once again. He has that win a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you know, he's 37 years old. He's not going to go party his ass off. He's got a family, two kids. Uh, and so, you know, I don't think he's going on like a two-week bender like if Harry Higgs won or something <laughs> like that. You know, so so I don't think you have to worry about that. I also don't think you have to worry about Varner. I mean, he was in Saudi Arabia. It's not like you can go out to the strip club in Saudi Arabia. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So 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 he probably didn't, didn't party as much as he wanted to, uh, especially since he's playing this week. Uh, but, I mean, I like List a lot. Uh, his game, I think, you know, when it comes to the the, the, the stat, why he's fifth in my model uh, for this week, you know, really good uh, on the, uh, from 175 to 200, you'll see a lot of those this week, really good on par fives. He has that monkey off of his back, he has to be playing relaxed out there. His job is secure for the next two years. 
Um, you know, so that, that, that's a lot of stuff that can relieve from your mind when you're out on the golf course, because we know how mental the game of golf can be and going out there and just going out there and freewheeling it. I think list that could help him a lot. So I like, I like this. I like eight answer too. 7,900 really, really cheap for a guy like him. He hadn't been playing well, but he had a top 10 last week. I think in Saudi Arabia, I think that's where he played. Um, so you see his game coming back just a little bit. Uh, and so at that price, you know, I'm down again. I mean, he's not the longest guy, but he's really good on these sh- longer par fours. I think he's fifth in the field in the last 40, in the last 50 rounds uh, when it comes to 450 to 500 yard par four uh, efficiency. Uh, so I, I like him, but I mean, I mean, I'm going to be playing a lot of these guys. Homa, another guy I'll play. Mitchell, another guy I'll play. I think I like Homa's bet 70 to one for a guy who came in six here last year has has win equity. You know the guy can win. He's either going to win or he's going to miss the cut, and that's all you really. I mean, when it comes to betting, I mean, you know, that's it doesn't really matter if he finishes second. You know, you want that win equity, and I think Homa has that. So I like that number at 70 to one for for Max. Who do you like in his upper range? I love the Abe call. Uh, first one that you brought up there, just because, like you said, just that, you know, finally got a, a decent finish under his belt. But I think I might be wrong on this, but I know it was the tour junkies. Our friends over there had the Abe's caddy on the podcast at one point. I think it was during like when coronavirus first happened and sort of came out and they were just doing some random interview. And he said two things that Abe loves. He loves a morning tea time and he loves playing golf in hot weather. Reminds him of Mexico, right? Going back and playing in his hometown. Phoenix, Arizona is pretty hot, man. I've been there a few times, so I can tell you that everyone knows it. And yeah, if he gets, I'm not that he needs the early tea time. I don't care about that part, but it's just an interesting tidbit about him. And at 7,900, it seems like a really fair price coming off a decent result. Don't think as many will play him because he got that range underneath of Varner, Gooch, List. Also, you reminded me of something too. Our boy Varner capitalized on the nappy factor right away, right? Was I think he's four month old. Baby, baby, and now he comes out and gets the job done. So that was, you know, another added bonus. Definitely not going out and partying too hard, in my opinion. So you got, you know, Varner, List, Gooch. Those guys are interesting there. You mentioned Homa. Uh, I'm not as high on him as you are there. I like Keith Mitchell playing some good golf off of last week as well there. Joel Damon, another guy just going to stick with him and ride the form. 7K range for me is not as loaded as you. It's loaded with guys, but I feel like we can just talk through it. So I'll give the rest of my plays here. But um, Russell Knox. Another guy that's been playing some decent golf, Keegan Bradley. The Patriots are irrelevant these days, so there is nothing to rush home for. Used to get like 24th every tournament just so you could get out of there, catch the PJ, and get back home to the Super Bowl or whatever. Doesn't need to do that anymore. The Patriots are long gone and out of the playoffs. So uh, Keegan Bradley, I like. Pat Perez, been playing some good golf. And then I'm sort of, you know, struggling here with the bottom range because I think this is where it gets popular, right? Mito. Should be extremely popular. I teased it out today, Kenny. I said I figured out the Waste Management Phoenix Open. The WMPO acronym is winner, Mito, Pereira, outright. And I love the number, 140, so I had to bet it. But jokes aside, I think he's going to be pretty damn popular at just 7K. That's cheap for a guy. His talent, the numbers you're going to see pop. Uh, He does show up in all the stats, both recent, six months, whatever you want to go by. And the numbers elsewhere are looking pretty good as well. So him... Aaron Wise look to be popular down here. What are you doing in this bottom 7K range? Um, you know, I do like the Mitchell. I have a bet on Mitchell, 110 to 1. Uh, I like that play a lot uh, this week. Going down a little bit more, um, I like Gary Woodland, another guy who's played this course well. He's won here. Um, you know, it looked like he got his game back a little bit the last time I was out. Missed a bunch of cuts, finished, what, I think, 35th, 36th. The last time maybe he's regaining uh, that form. I think he's worth a flyer at that price. I know you got a TPCKH Lee. If he's like 15, 18% on, I'm probably not going to play him. Uh, but I do have the bet on him, 130 to 1. Uh, you know, I think it's worth the bet uh, down there because, you know, the guy has won before at a TPC course. And we'll see how it goes when it comes to his ownership. If he's not going to be that highly owned, I think it's somebody that you could look at. Um, uh, Molinari at 7K. I mean, you know, th- this is not the longest course, and Molly's been playing pretty, pretty well. I know he's a Cali- he's been a California kid uh, the last couple of years, but at 7K, I think it's worth throwing a flyer on a guy who's been playing pretty decent here uh, with it, with his form uh, recently. I do like Perez as well, uh, and maybe a little Brennan Grace when it comes to um, you know low ownership but good course history. Uh, you know, I don't think, I don't expect him to get out of single digits. Uh, and you know, I think he has a couple top tens his last two times out here. So we'll go with grace. All right, let's move to the six K range. I'm going with another course history. Sorry. Another course history guy. I like, uh, Adam Hadwin 
uh, this week. You know, he's made, he just makes a whole bunch of cuts here. Uh, you know, I think he's viable in cash. Uh, and you, you, like you said, you sort of play up the course history when it comes to these type of courses the last couple of weeks, uh, you know, about three or four times in the last, you know, month uh, early on in the season. And you know, as, as we get more um, into the year, I think I'm going to look at it less because that's the way I've done course history. I have not paid as much attention to it as I have in the past, but these specific courses, uh, I think are a little bit more important. And, I, and so I like Hadwin um, Glover really good with the wedges from 150 to 200 yards. I think again, he didn't play that well, uh, what last week, he had, you know, but he has a win, what three, four months ago, not, not too long ago. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I, I don't mind him at that price. Nick Taylor, uh, another K- Canadian guy. I'm going to play him party Marty Laird, uh, a guy who tends to love this course. Uh, he's actually been playing pretty damn well in the last couple of events uh, in the last 12 rounds. I think he's top 25 in my model. Uh, you know, really good. He's been really good tee to green. Uh, other guys I do like um, Lashley will be another course history guy I like. And if you want to go a little bit lower, um, Kramer Hickok uh, at $6,400. Um, really good recently from 150 to 200 yards. Last 12 rounds inside the he's seventh from 150 to 175, 19th from 175 to 200. He's been really good tee to green, making a lot of birdies. So I do like Hickok as a cheap, cheap play down to $6,400. Yeah, played well at the Sony as well, so that's another interesting call there. The, the other one was uh, with Hadwin, kind of like that. Like, he looked good. Pebble Beach numbers are solid. 6900 is a, a pretty fair price for him. Like you said, at least he makes, makes the cut, and he showed up at other desert courses and stuff in the past as well, so I think he's a, a good call at 6900 Martin Laird, Party Marty, this is his spot. Like, just talking about another guy down there, 6800 uh, He sets up quite well across the board. Hoffman, I worry about, like I said, more on the withdrawal because it was in tournament. But well, also, six, it's been like it's been like three or four events in a row, too, with him. Yeah, like, it's just it's been, been a, a struggle. Problem. So it's yeah. t- tougher to go to a guy like him for sure. Like I said, the numbers will show up and he'll pop. But so I brought it up, right? A couple other guys here. Uh, James Hahn, who you brought up, was on my list. And the only other one, like I, I got no problem just for the most part fading this entire range. I just don't love it. But, you know, Ekro, if, you know, you get a little flop lag off last week, Monterey Peninsula was the easier course. Not that this is going to be an easy setup. I think you nailed the number earlier, maybe 17, 18 under type thing. But I think the course sets up better for him. I don't think as many will go back. And he's the guy that I kind of liked at 6,200. So James Hahn and Cash, Eckroad and tournaments, maybe how you play it. You can use both to get crazy and jam all the studs. Do whatever you want there. But I think he'd be the guy I'd be a little bit more interested down below. Try and zig when everybody zags, right? If they go off him after he missed the cut on them last week, hop back on board this week at a course that I think sets up a little bit better for him. All right, so let's get to bets uh, for this week. My first bet up top is Victor Hovland, 16 to 1. Uh, next one, I don't know if I'm going to play him in, in, in DFS, but uh, Kepka, 30 to 1. Uh, anytime he's 30 to 1 or more, I, I feel like it's you have to bet him. I don't know why. I just feel, especially on a course where he's won uh, a couple of times, if I'm not mistaken, Twice. at least yeah. once. Yeah, so I mean, 30 to 1, I'll take that. Uh, Homa, 70 to 1. Um, Woodland, 100 to 1, Keith Mitchell, 110 to 1, KH Lee, 130 to 1. So those are going to be my six uh, plays. And then I think I'm going to spend, you know, a quarter of my uh, allotted bankroll for betting uh, and live bets as the week goes on. Yeah, I, like I said, I think a favorite's going to win it, but I'm trying here anyway. So the one that I did bet up there that was 33 to 1 is Sam Burns. Only because, you know, the value, the other guys are 20 or 18 or 16 in those numbers. I think Burns has looked pretty good. He did get the job done recently. Before that, he was pressing to get it done and then pressed the pedal right down and got the job done. So I like him as a guy that could actually close at 33 to 1. I don't know how much I'll actually get to him in DFS this week. So I kind of like it more of a hedge. I think if he's up there, he absolutely can, can close the door and win. So I like that number on him. Henley, 55 to 1. These are all top five each ways. But Henley, 55 to 1. Connors. 66 to one Keith Mitchell, same as you 110 to one Mito 140. And then I did KH Lee got him at 150. Again, probably not going to play any of him, but to get that number with the top five, these guys are all like Mitchell Mito KH Lee, probably better top twenties. And then I had to bet this one going back last shout out for our boy, Martin Sundog monkey. He likes Brandon Haggy this week out of nowhere. And he had him at like 300 and my book happened to have him at 750 to one. So I hit that just because, uh, you know, the top 20s aren't out yet there. So we'll wait and see what happens if they adjust. 
but I, I definitely had to hit that. And I don't feel like adding a seventh really mattered because it's 750 to one. So I'm okay with it. All right. One and done. I think I'm going to speed. Uh, I think, I think, I think I'm going to use Spieth on this one. It's Spieth or Kepka. We'll see. I don't know. That's Kepka funny. might save her majors. <laughs> uh, I, I think, I'm, I think one of these big, I've already used Decky. Uh, I've already used Canlay. I don't know. I want to think I want to save Rom and JT. Hovland, he's never played this course before. So uh, I think he played it once and he missed the cut. So I don't think I'm going to go with him, but even though I like him in cash, I, I, I'm Spieth or Xander. Spieth or Xander is who I'm going to play this week. Yeah, one thing I will say, I, I, you can save Rom. You can pick your pick your spot with Rom. Like, look, the guys do. Here wouldn't be a bad spot. He's been so close recently. But I, I like saving JT mainly because, and even Hideki, if you've got him, I know it's a good spot to use him, the history and all that. But I think saving those guys for the players, again, pick who you're, if you're going to save JT for the players and hope that he goes back to back, then use Decky. It's fine. I'm just saying, I think people forget how much money that's actually worth. And that's going to be a big time difference on one and done's this year. We talked about it in our season preview, which is still relevant. If you want to go back and check it out, it's all of our picks for the majors. It'll come into play more as the majors come upon us. But I do think that's an important thing to think of. And it's funny because I had written down Spieth and Decky and it's because, you know, 10, four Decky, I might not get there. Like I said, and I'm kind of already leaning. You might've talked me into some, some can't lay instead and just leave Decky alone. If he's going to be popular, which he probably is use Decky and one and done, get some exposure that way. Uh, you know, he's 18 to one. Didn't really love that. Although it may be good value with how much he's winning lately, but Spieth might be the time to use him because I'm definitely not playing. I mean, even though he's 9,900, I just don't play Spieth. So uh, I don't know. I'll be use one of Decky or Spieth, but I, I like those calls for sure. All right. That sounds good. You can find me on Twitter at Kendo VT. You can find my article on gupscorner.com. It's already out for the course preview uh, and stats to look for Wednesday. I'll have out my uh, casting cornerstones. If they change my, um, uh, Final betting card and my favorite GPP play in each range. Those have been pretty good here so far this season. So you might want to check that out. Use promo code Kenny. Get yourself 30% off a disc, uh, uh, a membership, and then seven-day risk-free trial. So if you don't fuck with it, you can just bounce. But you'll fuck with it. The tools are great. Gubs ownership projections were spot on last week. Spot on. Uh, so go check out the site. Yeah, and you can find me on Twitter at ToeTag and Tambo. Hit me up there if you guys have any questions. And then over at Run Pure Sports, Kenny mentioned it earlier. We got a lot of stuff going on there. NFL, Super Bowl, everything coming up. Have our best promo of the year. It's SB56, and you get 56% off your first month. That's all sports. So you've got the Super Bowl coming up, the bets that are going with it, the prop bets, showdown, everything that you can get there. All the other sports, NBA, NASCAR, MMA, everything that's back on top of all the others. And then for the PGA stretch, that one month you're going to get, it's Genesis. This waste management this week, Genesis, Honda, API, and the players will all be a part of that package. So it's definitely the time to jump in now, hop into the Discord, and check us out. Yeah, this next month is going to be pretty nice for golf. Lots of big tournaments, uh, lots of big events, lots of big names, lots of big prizes. It's going to be fun. This week we start with the craziness at the Waste Management Phoenix Open. So let's win some motherfucking money. DJ Nation. I've been getting dirty money, Jordan Belfer. Stacking penny stocks while I'm flipping these birds. Sipping on Ciroc, trip them up with the words. I done popped the 